Hello, my beautiful friends. This is Yossi Kaplan. Today, we're going to talk about the Carnaby at 11 Peel Avenue and 20 Minoan Milken Lane. Um, you're basically looking at Quinny Gladstone. Quinny Gladstone, the first bill on the corner is 2 Gladstone. You got 8 Gladstone and you got the 20 Gladstone, which is now 11 Peel, 20 Minoan. Uh, let's have a quick look at some pictures. I'm going to talk to you about this building. Why is it important? I'm going to show you two listings that are available to, for sale right now. I've, I've been in one of them. And I'll give you some nice information about why this is important, why you need to know about this, um, how much I think it's going to sell, on and on and on. Uh, before we start, a quick introduction. Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor, Investor, Mortgage Agent with Search Realty. Fantastic company. Um, this is my site, yossikaplan.com. Um, here you can see the latest video. You can get information or contact me through this form, join the newsletter. Uh, I'm posting whatever I can here in terms of really nice property available, properties available for sale. Uh, some pre-construction, some available. Uh, I'm giving you articles that I write extensively about what to look for in the condom market, how to think as an investor, what kind of investor mindset you need, what are the things you need to know. So, for example, this one, tips on eight, you'll see eight tips on buying and selling condo assignments. So, what's assignment? Why would you sell it? Why would you buy it? How would you do it? There's some videos. I've got lots of videos about assignments. People call me all day long, agents, brokers, buyers, sellers, developers about assignments. It's a complicated matter, but that's okay for me. Um, hire the best agent, which is Yossi, list immediately, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is my Twitter, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, where you get the fastest, most instant responses, replies, posts, whatever, about what you want, because it's very easy for me to just grab the phone and boom, tweet it, okay? So if there's a video, a new video coming out, you'll see it here. If there's a new article, see it here. Or here, uh, this morning I answered some... Uh, um, Quora, Quora website. My answer uh, to how hard is to fake an MBA degree? <laughs> I wrote, you know, the diploma you can you can uh, you can make yourself, but the knowledge you cannot. Uh, how do you get started in real estate with just a little money? Uh, what's going on in real estate in your real estate business? So on and so forth. And then there's you know everything you need to know. If I find uh, new listings, nice listings I like. Uh, how to find information? I like to share information. 203 plus new listing uh, posted, so that's a archive of my newsletter you can sign on on my site, okay? Um, it just goes on and on. This is the YouTube channel that you're watching right now. Thank you very much, everyone, to subscribe, like, share, up, link, up, down. It's all good. Just keep them coming. Please subscribe, like, and share. Everything helps. When YouTube looks at the video that I post, if you make a comment or you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's all good because YouTube likes it and then he shows it to more people. So please comment, subscribe, hit the bell, whatever you like. Let's go into Carnaby. There's a lot more sites, but I just want to get focus into the Carnaby. If I have some time, I can show you some other things, but we'll see. Running uh, fast today, lots of uh, listings for sellers and properties for buyers, and I want to post this video. So this is the Carnaby. The Carnaby is um, completed now. This is a slightly older picture from the last year. So we, we're mid all mid-2019 now. By the way, the latest video I've done is my prediction Q3 and Q4 of 2019. So starting July 1st to uh, uh, December 31st of this year, 2019. I kind of give you an idea, like a round idea of what's going on, what you need to know, da 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 da, da. Okay. Um, so here... And today I'm using condo.ca, not yossi.searchreally.co, uh, just for fun. It's a fantastic site. I hear they invested well over a million dollars in the site. It really shows, um, and I really like it. I think a lot of people like it. It's really becoming kind of de facto site for a lot of people to get information. Not There's other information on other sites, like my site, which I manually type it, and, you know, this won't give you ideas of how to invest. It just gives you, like, raw information, but the rest you got to do yourself. you got to talk to someone like me who's been doing this for so long, and that's all I do, okay? Uh, the average PSF means a dollar per square foot you get for the unit, 963, past 365 days, okay? So that goes all the way back to last April 2018, which prices were lower by about, say, 7 or 10%, or maybe even 15% in the Carnaby, I'd, I'd imagine, okay? Um, and it shows you the average over the year. Small units, large units, units with parking, units with locker, units without parking, units without locker, units with parking locker or none. So it's just an average. So obviously, you're going to understand that when you look at an average, it's just an average. So good units, 
And to me, a good unit is one that has view and it's great layout because the great layout is the biggest problem in Toronto. Do not invest, as I told you before, do not buy units with crappy layouts. Just don't do it. Just don't. Let someone else, we call them the dog units, the dog units. And we call them uh, the realtors, the old school people like me. Don't buy them. This is kind of the inner courtyard between the two buildings. And they're really nice because they, they kind of broke down, you know, instead of making like a giant like block, which is, which is kind of harsh and not fun to, to uh, hang out. Uh, this is nice. Got a little courtyard. It's facing back to like, no, this basically, you're looking north right now. So Queen Street is behind you and College, you know, or Dundas is ahead of you. Dufferin is to your left. And Gladstone is to your right, okay? So east to the right, west to the left, because I'm facing north. So that's what you see. This is the same building, it's just the architecture is a little kind of broken in, uh, which is cool because it gives it a bit of, of, of variety. So there's something for everyone. There's some more shots here. There's Metro uh, downstairs, which is fantastic, and a fresco across the street, just to show you how many people still are expected in the area. And when more people come to the area, that means more money for the sellers because everyone wants to live in the same area so every unit that sells if the market is healthy it's going to come up a little more a little more a little more a little more but there's something very interesting happening here that's why i'm making this video and i want to share that with you okay so <laughs> all right uh da 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 da, da. storage units 434 four. that's not that many really okay uh amenities the amenities are great, everything's cool. Uh, there's no pool here, but everything is okay. And it's a friendly building, I like it. Um, Bohemian Embassy, which is 1169, 1171 Queen Street, right on Queen, friendly building. Then you got some other condo buildings, but today the focus is Carnaby, 20 Minoan. So this is the unit I saw last week, okay? Uh, this unit is listed at 599. Um, and what happened here, so what you're looking here is older information, although this is, I'm broadcasting live from condos.ca. All the sites you see that are secondary sites have a delay of about a day of about 24 hours. Um, this unit ended up, as far as I understand, that did not sell and may be relisted. It's already there, but you can't see it. Probably see it tonight or tomorrow at a different price. Uh, as far as I understand, it's going to be slightly higher price. Okay? So what happened here, like a lot of other units, um, there was a, um, an, um, a date for all the offers to come in. And then because of technical problems, nothing to do with the sellers or the buyers, uh, they had to delay that by a week. By that time, everyone that came to this unit already decided if they want to buy it or not, and most people moved on. So they start, you know, there's two ways to sell a listing. One is I put the hard date, and that's a date I go for, bring me offers, or I just put a price and I let it run. And whoever brings me the offer, I negotiate with them, whatever I like, you know, I don't have to agree to any offers, even if they offer me exactly what I want. I don't have to agree as a seller. Uh, I just don't sign it. I don't have to sign back either. Okay, I usually work for sellers. So when you're selling, definitely call me. And when you're buying, definitely call me because I know all the tricks on both sides. I started as a buyer broker, but I've always interested working on the side of the seller. Also because I work with developers so much. Okay, and when you work with developers, you sell the unit. You need to communicate the value the last video, remember I, I talked about the price versus the value, the value of this unit. So what I like about this unit that it is a corner suite. Okay? Now it's tenanted and it's it's designed real nice, but there's a lot of stuff in it, and there's a giant, giant couch here that takes the entire space. So although in the picture it looks really uh, uh nice, and it is nice when you walk in and it, it's like bright, it's gorgeous. But when you walk in, it's a giant, giant couch, and you kind of you feel the room is a little tight. But it is not tight, it's just that the couch is, is giant. Uh, this unit is about 620 square feet, more or less. So at $1,000 a foot, which is the average we see for resale, with the parking, okay, it should fetch about $620. Um, anything, uh, so, you know, if I were the seller, um, and you can see the older price is $599, they're looking probably to bring a few bids together and do a bit of bidding war and get the price up, because that's what's happening now. Uh, another unit, uh, 8 one four, I believe, um, also was listed for five nine nine, but it was a larger unit, two bedroom, west facing, um, nothing across from you above the train tracks, and that ended up selling for about seven twelve. Okay, so it's not like it sold one hundred twelve over asking. Well, technically it did, but at seven hundred square feet, high floor, 
open view. No one, you don't even need blinds because no one can look in at a thousand and you know two or five, whatever it was, a dollar a foot with the parking and locker. Fantastic value. So remember what I told you just a couple minutes earlier. Uh, 963 was the average for a year, but that takes the units, all the units down there that looking into the courtyard have no view, no sun, and then the high unit. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to sell the second floor unit for the same PSF as the top floor because here I got no view uh, for this unit. And at the top, I got a beautiful unit, lots of view, sunlight, parking, locker, everything I want, maybe corner suite. Okay, so that's why I will fetch more dollar per foot on these units because if you look just logical you know this is nicer brighter shinier better quality of living so it wants to fetch higher price and that's what happens okay there you go so this is the south you can see the lake there's the building jogging in there but you can't really see anything you can close your blind just a little bit um, just like I got here actually um, and you give you uh, full privacy okay so this is a view from the balcony what you see below you is the fresh co um, eventually that will be built too. I don't know how high, but for now it's really good. And that's uh, at the side, that's Bohemia. Okay, here's another shot. Um, that's Bohemia and the Green Building. Uh, that's 68 Abel. That's 36 Lisgar. So on and so forth. You can see all the downtown. There's uh, 488 University. I have an assignment there if you're looking for. Okay, uh, here's the kitchen. This is great. The bedroom is really nice. It opens to the main room with way of uh, frosted sliding doors. Okay, that's another look. Uh, looking also uh, through the bathroom. Okay, so it's it's really nice unit. So to me, a thousand dollar foot. Oh yeah, one more thing interesting here. I'll go back. Okay, here. So when you walk in, there was a custom install because there was kind of a den, but it was not very deep. So what they've done is very very smart. I really like it. Uh, what they have done, the owner, uh, I, I presume, is installed a kitchen cabinet like it's a kind of lacquer. So adding a lot of storage space, very, very smart way of taking this kind of dead space. Remember, like, yeah, the designs, the interior designs, not always perfect in Toronto, um, and extended it by way of applying a lot of storage space. It's fantastic. So you can really have a nice, clean living in the unit, okay? So got two front loaders, look like Samsung's, whatever they are. Here is your gym, okay? And then, and then of course, after they show you the apartment, they're going to show you um, the yoga studio, common room, common room, some billiards, common room, okay? So that is the unit. So to me, uh, at $1,000 a foot, okay, it, it's hard to see. There's no floor plan here. You really got to walk in to get the essence of the unit, which is fine. But you walk in, you got your bathroom, you got your um, bedroom, and then on the left, when you walk in, you have the kitchen. Can I see it? Let me go back here. Okay, so oh, I just missed it. Here's the kitchen on your left. So the arrangement is very, very good. The only thing I would do here is use a half size couch, okay? And open the space up. There's also, if you notice a chair, there's kind of a nook, okay? where there's a computer desk in there, which is really nice. I would put a large mirror there and just even reflect the light even more. Uh, the ceilings are exposed concrete, which is beautiful. It's got a nice uh, light fixture. Uh, I believe that in included, but I'll verify for you if you need to know. Um, Everything is good. It's, it's, you know, it, it's a new building. I think it was occupied about a couple of years ago, so it's probably the first tenant. It's very well maintained and cared for the unit. I really like it. So um, it's probably going to come back in the market just over six and just normal way waiting for offers, which is perfect. The TV is mounted into the concrete uh, pillar. Everything's good. Okay. So Queen West, a unit uh, about 600 and change, 620 or so square feet. Uh, it listed as one plus then the, these two areas. It's not really a den you can sit in. Uh, you can put a chair. And in the back, where I showed you, the extension of the, ca the kitchen cabinetry. I'm not sure if it was done before the fact or after, but it's smart. Uh, but it's not a den you can use in a, You can't sleep in that den. It's kind of a little work den. But it's very, very nice. And to me, a $1,000 a foot is very, very good value because there's nothing that you can buy new construction at 1000 Nothing. 
And even if they sold you a thousand, it's going to be like starting from. So maybe it's going to be a very large unit, say a thousand square feet. So it'll be a million dollars, even if you could get it. Plus the parking and the locker, that's another 70, 80,000. The price pushes up. Even if you bought, you know, 600 square feet at a thousand. So 600,000. And you add the parking lot in the 80, 680. Suddenly your price is like around 1,100 a foot or 1,200 a foot. And that's what we see. Okay. So we see. Um, 10, 11, 12, a foot, no problem, uh, here in King West, I got nothing for you under 13 anymore, okay, I had 12 maybe at 543 Richmond, maybe they have a unit or two left, Rush is like 13, 14, Bjork Engel is like 16 to 18, uh, University 481, so 488 University, you can still get a 12 or 13 assignment, 481 across the street, that's a 1650, on and on and on. So that's what's going on. Developers, which I speak with every day, um, they just tell me that the, the costs are just massive. The cost of land is rising all the time because the people that own the land understand the principle of scarcity and they go, well, you know, you want my piece of land. I only got that one. You got to pay me maximum dollar. So they charge, you know, 20 million for the lot, 100 million for the lot, whatever. But if you divide it by the amount of square footage, you know, sometimes they're paying three or four hundred dollars a foot, the developer, just for the square footage they're going to have to build. And then they're going to have to pay maybe three hundred to four hundred for the actual construction. Then they're going to pay another two or three hundred dollars a foot um, for all the soft costs, which is the legals and the marketing and, and doing the sales and stuff and the people and all, all the bureaucracy, all that stuff. It's heavy, heavy, heavy. And then there's a lot of levies and charges that developers absorb themselves. Not coming to, you know, defend this or that. I'm just telling you what it is. So, you know, if a developer cost is like a thousand a foot, he's not going to sell for less than 12 or 13 because he's going to come up with all that money, all that stress. You know, these guys getting heart attacks, more than one. We wish them luck. We wish them health. Everyone. It's a tough business. So that's what's going on. If you can find, that's why I've been talking about resale because resale is more affordable these days. In the old days, you know, 10, 20 years ago, when you buy new construction, you're going to get a new construction and go, man, it's, it, it's got a risk built in because what if the developer is not going to finish? And you see some small scale developers um, that are not closing on the units and they're basically sending the deposits back and then relaunching high prices. So always go with a developer that is established that they, they're just not going to do it. You know, the large developers, especially the large family-owned developers, these are billion-dollar families and quite a few of those in Ontario. Um, and, you know, this is third and fourth generation of construction families. And I'm a second generation, really third, if, if you want to consider grandpa, that literally worked in construction, okay? So third, um, that's how it goes. It's a, it just, it just, you got to build it up, you got to build it up. And, and when you have a family business, you're proud of the name, you're proud of the family name, you're proud of the quality of work you do, you know, you, it's not going to be any monkey business. You're just going to generate a very, very good quality. Now, Streetcar is excellent developer. They started the east side. They're still very active there, but they also have done a lot of work on the west side. And I'm very, very impressed by the quality of the product they produce. Their flow plans are one of the, some of the best I've seen. Um, the end product is very good. And as a result, investing in a, in a product like this, whether it's this developer or another you know, it's good. So remember, Yossi likes quality, okay? Yossi invests in the long term. I'm not a flipper, though. Of course, I've flipped hundreds of units for myself, for clients, been involved in so many sales on behalf of developers and personal people and whatever. But I, I like quality. I like to invest in quality because quality means longevity. And when you have longevity, you're cool, Okay. So this is the unit at 20 Minoan Mikan Lane. Who came up with this name? I don't know. Who was Minoan Mikan? I don't know. Why they only got a lane? I don't know. But that's what it is, and we need to learn how to pronounce it. Okay, very nice unit. It is available at the moment. Um, tomorrow, probably, you're going to see the new listing. I guess it's going to come at around six and a quarter, okay, which is also good. So that's what I got for you for today. If you are looking to buy, to invest in Toronto condos, you should give me a call and we'll have a discussion because there's opportunity in resale now that hasn't happened in many, many years. But remember, when you buy resale, you own it immediately. The mortgage starts as soon as you close and you either move in there or find a tenant to live in there. Okay? If you buy pre-construction, you have time. 
So you can put the 15% down. Let's say you, you pay, uh, let's say you bought a million dollar property. You put your 150, 5%, 5%, 5% over, you know, six months or nine months or a year. And then you can just do this and wait and let the market come up. Remember the previous video, the market has to come up because it's got a, it's got a hedge for inflation. Okay. There's no way around it. That's how the system works. We're in it. Um, so if you buy pre-construction, you just put the deposit down, your three or four payments, and just wait, and then you can assign it, flip it, or live in it, or come in, rent it out, get your HST rebate, all that, okay? So that is for today, Yossi Kaplan Real Estate out of Search Realty in Toronto. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone. There's a lot of new subscribers. I really love it. It's really cool. Uh, these are the videos. There's some playlists here, so if you want to look by uh, by topic, you can. You want to look by date, you can. You want to look about popularity, you can. YouTube's cool. I hope they don't ban me. They like to ban people, so don't say stuff they don't like. Uh, this is <laughs> or whatever, ban me. I don't care. Uh, this is the Twitter, 2157 followers. Fantastic. There's some new stuff here. Oh yeah, look at this. So uh, this came up from uh, one of my uh, other sites. And they're reposting to Twitter so you can see what's going on. Absolutely fantastic, okay? Yossi Kaplan, yossikaplan.com. Let it load. There she is. One way for you. Okay.